Welcome back again to Ancient Mesopotamia, Portrait of a Dead Civilization. We're doing a summary of A. Leo Oppenheim's book. This is episode 12. We are looking at his History of Babylonia essay. This is part two. We'll be looking at Hammurabi of Babylon, someone near and dear to our heart. The fall of the first dynasty of Babylon and the aftermath with the Kassites, and then finally an introduction to the Chaldeans who appear in the first millennium in Babylonia. So after the fall of the Ur III dynasty there at the end of the third millennium with Shulgi and uh, his, his uh, dynasty, the cities of Isin and Larsa held sway respectively in the in the region in the north in mesopotamia northern mesopotamia uh, shamshi adad the first ruled there beginning at the end of the 19th century and held sway over a very large region in northern mesopotamia so during the hundred years leading up to hammurabi's reign uh, babylon was fairly insignificant there was the taking and losing of certain cities uh, points out the city of Kish, for example. Um, and so Babylon was, relatively speaking, insignificant. Hammurabi's father, Sin Mubalit, uh, really began uh, the trend of bringing Babylon to power. He fought in the south, uh, but he did so uh, primarily because Shamshadad was in the north and um, he, he couldn't match him. When we come to Hammurabi though, um, circa 1810 to 1750, uh, following the death of Shamshi Adad in 1776, Hammurabi began this um, consistent expansion. He eventually defeats Elam and Larsa to the south then Ashnuna, and finally the city of Mari. Uh, around 1600, the Hittite king, Morsali I, comes down and conquers Babylon. This brings an end to the first dynasty of Babylon and brings on a dark age of approximately 100 years. Following this dark age, there's an invasive people group who comes and controls Babylonia for essentially the second half of the second millennium. These are the Kassites. The palace organization under the Kassites was revived, so private economic activity significantly decreased, and this instated a type of feudalism. Uh, the Kassites were part of that Amarna period Great Powers Club, so Bernaboriash, and uh, you can see some of the uh, intrigue or developments that took place in our daily data video on the Amarna period, this Great Powers Club. In the beginning of the first millennium, uh, around the ninth century, we begin to hear about a people group called the Chaldeans. They lived primarily in the south, in the marshy, swampy areas, and they were divided into houses. You can see them there, beat Takori, beat uh, Amukani, beat Yakin, beat means um, house, house of, uh, beat Adini, beat Sha'ali, and beat Shilani. And we can talk more about those in a later video. There was a general lack of allegiance among the Chaldeans to the Neo-Assyrian Empire. And this led to guerrilla warfare tactics as they were from the southern area, which allowed them to sort of recede into areas that were difficult to get to. They would come out and attack caravans and attack, uh, try to disrupt uh, those established processes with the Neo-Syrian Empire. And it was very difficult, as we're going to see next in the next daily data, it was very difficult for the Neo-Assyrian kings to control the Chaldeans. So they sought to disrupt the system that was in place, and they were a nightmare for the Neo-Assyrian kings. 
So in summation, Hammurabi took a formerly weak Babylon and conquered cities in all directions to form his empire. This was in the beginning of the, well, the end of the first quarter of the second millennium. The first dynasty of Babylon fell to the Hittites around 1600. The Kassites, following a dark age, ruled Babylonia for the latter half of the second millennium. And coming into the first millennium, the Chaldeans became the major players in Babylonia, acting initially as disruptors to the Neo-Assyrian Empire. Tomorrow, we will look at Babylonian History Part 3, Assyria's Babylonian Problem. So stay with us. Until next time, resist poor scholarship. Always ask, how do you know that?